Thank you. Uh, good day, everyone. My name is Bong Sen, and I'm an Ant-Man. Today, I would like to share my uh, master's work with you, and I hope you all will enjoy it. So I wanted to start with this uh, background information slide, but this slide came into my mind. And I'm sure most of you all like this tree. Then I said, let me just put it. So everyone, when he or she sees this, this slide, you actually becomes happy because you know that this tree is associated with gift. So this is to say trees offers us gift. But our perspective changes when you see these ones. We tend to, uh, how can I put it? We tend to ignore the gifts that are, provi that are provided by, with, that are provided by these trees, but we really enjoyed those, the previous one, the Christmas trees. So this is actually has to do with the level of looking at things. So one guy said, the voyage of discovery is not in seeking the new landscape, but is in having a new eye. So we need to actually keep our eyes open and actually appreciate our natural trees. So the role of forest. Forest actually plays a, cr a critical role in mitigating uh, climate changes because they act as a natural carbon sink. They provide a habitat for a number of plants and animals, most of which they still need to be discovered. And they, uh, they provide vital life supporting ecosystem services, good, good and service to people. And of course, they, uh, they provide ecosystem service to, as well as to uh, uh, plants and animals. So this is the slide I should have started with. The forests are currently being destroyed at an alarming rate. And it is the global rate has been, uh, the global rate of deforestation has been reported to be approximately 5.21 million hectares per year. Forests are being destroyed every year. Like, sorry, let me talk to you. The rate of global deforestation has reported that approximately 5.21 million hectares of forest are destroyed, are lost every year. And it comes as no surprise that this also affects uh, our biodiversity. And also it has been uh, reported that the global average loss is 84.6% uh, of uh, biodiversity loss. So in South Africa, between the years 1800 and 200, people destroyed about 40% of, uh, of forest only to plant sugarcane. And now we are sitting on approximately 0.1% uh, of the land cover of the forest. So what are we doing? We need to amend, amend our mistakes we need to, like, the only way that we can save our biodiversity is through uh, reforestation, rehabilitation, uh, rehabilitation, restoration, as well as reforestation. So these three words, if you know what I mean. So, uh, but first, dry, Etagwin municipality has initiated this project, which is actually good. They're starting to plant back these natural trees in the north of Devon, trying to bring back all those uh, lost uh, biodiversity. This uh, site was previously used for sugarcane plantation, but now they are planting back these uh, natural trees. So even though this project is a carbon sequestration initiative, but it's simultaneously in short, they improve supply of other ecosystem services such as water quality, sediment, sediment regulation, as well as biodiversity, refugee conservation. So this is where I come in. We know that there are number, there are a lot of these uh, reforestation projects that are around here in South Africa. This include, also includes the uh, Imbovane project as well as this uh, Buffer Strike Community project. But we need to monitor them to see whether are they progressing in a positive way or the Tegun municipality is actually wasting uh, the, 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 our te taxpayers' money to fund these uh, such projects. So, uh, and the, 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 the invasive rates, ants in particular, are actually suitable taxa for this job. Reason why, it's not only because they are abundant, but they are easily collected. And the one that is mostly important, they are widely recognized as bioindicators of ecological changes associated with human land use, and they perform important function in ecosystem, uh, in function in ecosystem, sorry. So there's a lot of published literature, literature that is already out there. And I've just listed the number, like a few of them, just to show that uh, ENDS has been used as bioindicators for actually 
a lot of uh, for actually in different places for instance in uh, for forestry mining industry as well as for uh, management success so the aim of, of, of my masters was to provide and checklist and to determine how species diversity and composition differ along this uh, reforestate landscape and also to determine to identify which factors might undermine differences in and diversity as well as composition along reforestated uh, reforestation gradient so the study was conducted in Buffers Rye landfill site which is located in the north of Durban the small town called Verulam Eight sites were selected, but for the sake of this presentation, I'll only present five of them. Short term, medium term, and long term restored site, which are three years in between, and as well as sugar cane, as well as uh, forestry as the reference site. So for our result, we found that uh, approximately 14,300 specimen belonging to six subfamilies, 26 genera and 69 species uh, were collected in buffer stripe. And not surprisingly, we found that uh, Marmakaya was the most diverse subfamily with 57% uh, richness as well as 90% uh, abundance. And followed by for Missinae, which was the second most diverse subfamily and the least diverse subfamily was Pseudomarmacinae, which had less than 0.1% uh, uh, abundance and only 1% species richness. So for inventory completion, we found that for almost all the site, the inventory completeness basic, based on six, uh, six different estimators closely converged to the highest observed species richness and were all uh, almost all of them were seven, more than 70% except for forest and well as a, a short-term restored site. A short-term restored site, maybe this may be due to a high level of disturbance there, while forest may be because of these uh, tags, they, they, they are, they smug, the, the wire smugglers, we found that there are some wire smugglers there, so they might as well play a role in this. And for a uh, species accumulation curve, we found that uh, our sampling was representative and this was based on six, uh, richness, six richness estimators. For species richness, we found that uh, the reference, the, the, reforest, the restored site, I'm not sure what happened here. Okay, the restored site, Short term, short term restored site, medium term restored site, as well as the long term restored site had a higher species richness, while the reference site sugarcane, as well as forest, had the least uh, species richness. And this is where I would like to uh, to emphasize more. The sugarcane, thank you very much. Sugarcane site was never good for uh, is never good for a uh, species, while forest uh, is actually. Uh, Forest is actually good, but in general, we know that uh, in ants, ant species, we know that in forest are not really good for ant species, but in this case, we found that they were the second uh, least uh, diverse and uh, least species rich. But as for the restored, restored site, they were actually doing great. So this means that uh, the trees, they actually be best accommodate uh, ant species. So for ant, uh, activity, which is commonly known as ant abundance, we found that uh, sugar cane is never good for ant species, but as for the trees, they are actually uh, they were higher in the stock side as well as the forest side. Um, for NMDS, we found that the forest site compared to these uh, other sites has unique species, which means this forest site actually uh, is the best in accommodating uh, end species or in fact species. So forest still remains best in, best in uh, providing habitat for other species while sugarcane actually doesn't do well. So this is one of the main reasons why municipalities should uh, plant back all the, the trees that they removed during 1800 and the 200. So, 
and I'm also appealing to you that let's just go out there and plant as many trees as we can to save our species. So, so far, I found that uh, whatever they are doing there, it's actually great. The municipality is doing a great job and they should keep up their work. But I will still go here. I will still go there again to do my sampling, my, my second sampling now in December to see if I will find some different trend or I'll still find the very same trend. So take home message. Uh, one professor once said, if invertebrate were to disappear tomorrow, human existence wouldn't last for long. So let's just recognize these guys. Let's just give credit where credit is due because they play a major role in our existence. And I'm appealing to uh, stakeholders, the policy makers, as well as the funders, give us funding to study these guys in depth because I'm certain that they might as well give us some unique uh, things or some unique uh, findings that we were never, that we didn't even notice it existed before. And uh, another thing is, uh, let's take care of our natural environment as it does to us. For instance, everyone wants to park under the tree, but no one wants to do the dirty work planting the tree. So who's going to do the dirty work for us? The coopters? The president? No, can't happen. So let's just go out there, plant as many trees as we can. So the best uh, time to plant the tree was 20 years ago, but the second best time to plant the tree is currently. It's just now. So. Uh, who run the world, it's not Beyonce or the girls or Trump for God's sake. It's actually the ants, uh, these little creatures who run the world. Uh, so size, does size matters? No, it doesn't. It's actually your performance that matters the most because you can be as big as you can, but if you can't perform, well, you're good as nothing. So I'd like to thank these following people. Thank you. <laughs>